on Wednesday, February 20th of the year 2014, four people were shot and killed in a home at 3432 South Parker Avenue on the south side of Indianapolis, Indiana. Walter Buddy Burnell was one of those slain in the house. He resided there and reportedly ran a drug business out of the dwelling. The other individuals killed in the home were 43-year-old Jacob Rodimich, Christy May Sanchez, who was 23 years old, and Haley Navarra, who was 21. By the following Monday, the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department had four individuals in custody and said the group was involved in the failed robbery and murders. The suspects were 26-year-old Anthony Ant LaRussa, 24-year-old Kenneth Cody Rackerman, Valencia Williams, who was 21 years old, and Samantha Bradley, who was 20. According to police, LaRussa had frequently done business with Burnell. Rackerman was doing security for Burnell at the drug house at the time. The cousin criminals knew that cash and drugs could be found there in abundance. The business was believed to generate as much as $60,000 a day. Rackerman and LaRussa were salivating over the cash. A Fox 59 news report from March of 2014 says that LaRussa hatched a plot to send Rackerman into the home with an ounce of methamphetamine on the night of February 20th to lure Burnell into opening a safe in his bedroom. Rackman was then to rob Burnell at gunpoint, keeping the money and drugs. Valencia Williams and Samantha Bradley were in the car with Cody when he arrived at the home and went inside. He'd been drinking alcohol and popping Xanax that night. This could explain why he forgot to bring the ounce of meth, which was an important part of the scheme. The robbery went awry. Cody pulled a revolver, which had been furnished by LaRussa. Burnell apparently told Cody that he wasn't going to give him shit. You're going to have to shoot me, Burnell reportedly told Rackerman. Perhaps, in his mind, he was calling the young outlaws bluff. It appears that Cody wasn't bluffing, or perhaps he was simply enraged at how the plan had fallen apart. He proceeded to fire one shot into Burnell's chest, mortally wounding him. Then he went inside a bedroom where Sanchez and Rodimich were getting high. He shot each of them in the head, killing them both. Then he turned his weapon on Haley Navarra. He shot her once in the neck, but he ran out of bullets before he could end her life. He then attempted to shoot the woman again using a shotgun that belonged to Burnell, but could not get the weapon to fire. So he told Valencia Williams, still in the awaiting getaway car, to come inside and directed her to finish what he'd started. Williams then shot Navarra twice in the head. Then the bandits escaped with the less than $100 that Burnell had in his pockets. Police would later find $7,000 in cash in a safe hidden beneath the carpet in the very room where Burnell was killed. There was a witness to the killings. Matthew Findley, who also worked security at Burnell's trap house and apparently did a very poor job of it, overheard the confrontation between Cody and Burnell. Subsequently, he watched as Cody shot Sanchez and Rodimich. Then he saw Cody shoot Haley Navarra in the neck and saw him run out of bullets. Finley told police that Navarra pleaded for her life and he tried unsuccessfully to protect her as Cody brought Valencia Williams into the home and as Williams opened fire on Navarra. Just before police located and cuffed the four suspects, Rackerman and LaRussa went to a Southside tattoo shop, according to reporting by Fox 59 News in Indianapolis. The men had matching artwork inscribed on their faces. Between their eyes, T-100, which apparently refers to Team 100, apparently some sort of group started by the two men. They also each had sweet dreams tattooed on their eyelids, a supposed homage to Buddy Burnell, their now deceased friend who they'd plotted to rob. When the IMPD announced on Monday, February 24th, that they had arrested four suspects, it divulged details about the criminal pasts of the perpetrators. The two women, Bradley and Williams, had short rap sheets, which included a few minor infractions such as shoplifting and hit and run. Conversely, Anthony LaRussa was committing burglary at 11 years old and was stealing cars and resisting arrest by the time he was 14. Rackerman's arrest record includes a criminal mischief charge when he was just 12 years old. As a teen, he was arrested after attempting to steal a car. In 2010, he and LaRussa were both bagged for assaulting a Southside business owner together. 
at least two of the South Parker Avenue victims had had their own entanglements with the criminal courts. Brunel had several drug convictions under his belt. Rodimich had been pinched for forgery, theft, drug possession, and other crimes in various incidents. Following the South Parker Street Massacre, Anthony LaRussa, Cody Rackerman, Valencia Williams, and Samantha Bradley added robbery and felony murder charges to their respective criminal resumes. The first of the villains to cop a plea was Samantha Bradley. She pled to the reduced charge of conspiracy to commit robbery, resulting in death, and admitted that she had driven the getaway car and that she had disposed of evidence related to the crimes. She also agreed to testify against her accomplices. In March of 2017, Samantha Bradley was sentenced to a 30-year bid, six of which she was to serve, the remaining 24 of which would be suspended. She had already served three years on good behavior, and based on that, her sentence was considered served, and she was released from custody shortly after her sentencing. She was ordered to do 400 hours of community service and would remain on probation for four years. In February of 2017, Valencia Williams and Anthony LaRussa entered plea agreements with the state. Williams copped to one charge of murder. LaRussa agreed to plead guilty to a conspiracy charge, as did Samantha Bradley. LaRussa and Williams were sentenced to 44 and 55 years, respectively. In February of 2016, Cody Rackerman accepted an agreement in which he would plead guilty to squeezing the trigger in the murders of two years prior. Rackerman did address the court and said, I didn't mean for it to happen and I apologize. That's all I gotta say. He initially resisted the deal, claiming that he was innocent and that he was at Applebee's eating with his family when the murders occurred. But eventually he yielded in order to escape the death penalty for which Marion County Prosecutor Terry Curry had vowed to advocate. In April 2016, Cody Rackerman was sentenced to four consecutive life sentences. For good measure, he had an additional 20 years tacked on for the robbery charge. The four murders on South Parker Avenue were among the eight homicides that occurred in Indianapolis over the course of a 15-hour period beginning on February 20th of 2014. At the time, it was referred to as the city's worst ever drug-related massacre, and that day was the bloodiest day the city had seen since June 1st of 2006 when seven members of one family were killed in a home on North Hamilton Avenue. I'll take a look at that story next. Be on the lookout for that video. Peace.